Hey there, it's Laura Wansick here, and I'm so excited to share how you can make your own D-ring binder from some fabric, chipboard, and buying a binder mechanism. I found mine on Amazon. I was really motivated to do this because D-ring albums are really expensive, and I figured that if I could figure out how to do this, I could save myself a lot of money, and I could customize my albums with some really beautiful fabric. I got my fabric from Rifle Paper Company, um, but you could use any fabric that you find, um, really any texture of fabric fabric would probably work as long as you can adhere it with glue. So here I'm starting with some chipboard. Um, again, it really depends on how thick you want your album. I'm not sure the exact weight um, or thickness of this chipboard. I will link some in the description that I've used um, before that I think would work for this. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I am not a perfectionist when it comes to sizing and edges and that kind of thing. And I think that there's a lot of forgiveness in the way that this album is constructed. So if it's not exactly perfect, it's really not going to matter. It's not going to um, show up, at least not in a way that bothers me. So I'm taking, I cut those chipboard into three different pieces. And again, I just eyeballed it based on the photo size that I'm including in this album and based on the binder mechanism size. So I just kind of left a little bit of wiggle room on the sides of the binder ring and a little bit of wiggle room for the photo when you close the album to kind of scooch over a little bit. And now I'm just adding some Mod Podge adhesive with a foam brush. And the reason I'm doing that rather than just, um, you know, putting it on in lines or something is that I don't want it to be bubbled. I want it to be smoothly attached to the fabric. You might be able to tell that the chipboard is a little bit curled there from the wetness of the glue. And if that really bothers you, you could put some books down to flatten it, something really heavy. I didn't, and it ended up being totally fine. It sort of um, ended up connecting and working together once the album was done. So I'm just folding the fabric around the edges kind of like the way that you wrap a present with those corners. I cut at, a, at an edge there so that it could fold down nicely and I'm just sort of being generous with the glue so that everything sticks nicely. I'm going to cover both of those sides with some white cardstock so those edges don't have to be perfect. I really love this fabric. It's so beautiful. Um, my parents gave me like three yards of it one time for my birthday. I didn't know what to do with it and, and I thought this would be perfect. So you can see that I also glued down some paper there. You could put fabric again, like you could wrap fabric around the paper or even more chipboard if you wanted to make the album extra sturdy. So I'm just using again that foam brush and some Mod Podge adhesive that I've had sitting around for a really long time. You could probably use roller adhesive, depending on, you know, if you wanted to use paper instead of fabric, there's a lot of different ways that you could customize this. So I'm creating the whole outer piece first, and then I'm going to attach the binder mechanism. So I got this off Amazon. This actually does not fit the standard, um, if you're an Ali Edwards Studio Calico person, the typical <clears throat> spacing of the albums for them with this page protectors doesn't actually match this. I think this is... I get confused by all of those A5, A6, but it's whatever one is a little bit closer than those other ones. I have an adjustable punch, so I'm able to um, punch my photos to match this, but the page protectors themselves don't work. So it comes with this, these two little screws that attach it. You put one on the outside, then you put that down and just screw it in the hole. The, the hardest part of this was putting a hole through the fabric in the chipboard that was wide enough to get that screw in there. But you can see it's nice and sturdy. Easy, I didn't even need a flathead screwdriver to get that in there. I love how that turned out, that's so cute. And you know, you could make it thicker if you wanted to, you know, if you had a bigger D-ring binder. So I cut all of my photos to, I think like the traveler's notebook size, approximately four by eight, something like that. This is a trip that my um, family took to Chicago, so I'm including a little bit of found objects here in American Girl um, doll store bag and I thought it was so cute I wanted to include it so I'm cutting it apart there and I love the little rope that's attached so I thought that I would um, just tie a little bow but I didn't want it to be too thick in the album so I cut the bag in half and then I'm just going to cut a little bow here with the rope itself. I'm pretty selective with the found objects that I include in my scrapbooking but I thought that this one was really fun and, and look how it matches that photo so perfectly, the size. So I'm marking the holes through the photo that I had already used the six punch for and then I'm using my crop -a dial to cut through that thick chipboard and then sizing them up. 
so that it can be a good backer and a little insert there. I felt like the white paper was a little bit too white, so I wanted to do some stamping and some decorating on the opening and the closing of the album. So I'm taking some alphabet stamps from the December Daily 2022 release with Allie Edwards to stamp Chicago there. I liked making the C and the G bigger so that it was Chicago. And then you can see there I'm using those stamps from my major stamp reorganization. If you follow my account at all, you might've seen that I did a huge stamp reorganization, I think over a year ago. And it's great. I love it. Um, it works perfectly for how I stamp and I'm able to find sentiments really easily. I need to do an updated video to talk about how much I've enjoyed that because I've got some questions. So that cute little craft pocket is from a travel release with Allie Edwards, as, is, as are most of the embellishments for this album. They come from that collection. I believe it's the 2022 summer release from Allie Edwards. She puts out a travel album travel collection pretty much every year. Some of these kind of butted up against the um, D-ring binder, so I just punched a little bit of a hole just to allow a little wiggle room, even though I'm adhering it straight to the page and not actually making it a separate um, page there. So you can see I just needed it to kind of nestle in and then I had to cut the inner page a little bit so that it could slide in and out without a problem. I really love those pockets. I think that's so cute and it adds kind of a way to get some extra embellishment in and get the story in there. I am not a big handwritten journaling person. I don't think as well when I'm trying to do that. Um, I think better and write better more thoroughly and more meaningfully when I'm able to type. So I end up actually printing the journaling on sticker paper, um, which you'll see in just a minute. So now I'm just going through all the little embellishments from the collection and adding them wherever they make sense in the album. I love Albums like this where the, page, where the pages are outside of the page protector because you can really experience the texture of the products, especially those cool um, fabric patches. These are little vellum strips. I thought that that was a cute sentiment for the closing of the album. So you can see here, this is the sticker paper that I printed my journaling on. It's a little glossy. I sized all of the journaling for the cards and then went ahead and just put them directly on the inserts that go in those craft pockets. So much easier than doing all that handwriting for me and you can see it is a little bit shiny. And then for the space around the journaling, I decided to repeat some of these sentiments as a little border. Again, those word strip phrases all being together rather than in their own stamp sets work so much better for me because when I'm looking for stamps, I look a very specific way. So organizing my stamps according to how I stamp has really helped me um, stamp faster and in a way that makes more sense for my workflow and my personality and how I, how I think creatively. Here's a little tip for you. If you have tweezers, um, definitely use them to put your letter stickers down because it helps with more precise alignment. And I know for me, it's just easier and more fun to use tweezers than it is to kind of get them off the sheet with my fingers. I often find that I bend them accidentally and create little creases in the letter. So this is a great, helpful tip. Also, these little label stickers that are from Studio Calico, they're a little thin, so I like to double up on them. That's another little tip just so that the white is a little bit whiter and you can't see through. I love these little fabric strips. These are not from the travel collection. I can't remember exactly what that's from, but again, a benefit from making an album with the pages outside of the page protector is that you can touch all this texture. It's a little bit more of a fun sensory experience. Just going through my stamps, adding things, these great um, little Interactive pockets from the travel collection from Allie Edwards for 2022 are so cute, but I was thinking if someone went through the album, they might not know that you're supposed to pull that little card out and read the journaling on the back. So I went through and stamped pull on the two of those that I had used. I don't know why, but I love this banana washi tape. It has nothing to do with the story of this trip, but I just thought it was cute and it kind of brought out some of the yellow, so I added some banana washi tape. I wanted want this pocket to act as an insert between these two photos, so I took some of the plastic um, that I keep in my stash for things like this and adhered the craft pocket directly to the plastic. It's nice and thick, so it's a great firm thing to hold it as you flip through the album. I can also link that in the description. And then for the back of it, just put some patterned paper 
Um, I played around with different options, but I ended up doing patterned paper, I think. It's good to just kind of put things there and see how it feels. Here's the completed album. I love how it turned out. I love that fabric so much. It's really nice and sturdy. It, it's the perfect size um, that holds these stories. See? 